today is strategies over spreadsheets. Look, every week I guess it's going to be that every single YouTuber wants to be the first one to tell you the premiums for the week, whether it's Round Hill, Defiance, <coughs> or Yield Max. I don't take part in this. Today I'm going to give you strategies. We're going to talk about unwinding a bad position. Okay, we're going to talk about an ETF when it starts to go bad, what can happen, how most people go wrong. We're going to use examples, but I'm not reading you this. I'll tell you what, if you go to the YieldMax website and put in your email, send them an email. Just say, hey, J. Diddy. J. Diddy. <laughs> That's funny. People like that. Keyword, J. Diddy in the comments. Hey, J. Diddy. Hello. And then they'll put you on the email list and you'll get this. And guess what that makes you? Smarter than the average YouTuber. Yeah, you can even beat Steve-O Bush, Bushbrow, okay, to the uh, reading of the returns. Like, oh gee, I can't read, thanks. Maybe we should do it in Braille. Everyone feel your screen. I'm gonna give you some real life examples as well. So, you know, if, right now, how much is AMZ? Okay, there is a huge difference. If you have, let's say, a thousand shares of something, and it goes down $3, okay? You lose $3,000. If AMSI has an occurrence of events that it hits $16 and misses earnings, if it were to have an unfortunate occurrence of events and drop to $16, and I'll explain to you how this might be possible. For the average guy with 1,000 shares, he loses two grand. I lose $54,000. There is a lot to think about, and we'll get into it with these ETFs. But let's jump down to Phoebe. They have rocked my world today, just on the 30th. Okay, not long ago, today being what, the 10th, the 9th? So on the 30th of September, I bought in at 150000 The next day, it was up to 153225 so I sold that amount. And then it was up again over the 150,000. I sold that amount to keep it at 150,000. And then on the seventh, I did it twice. I took 2,200, okay, and I took 850. And all of this in the little, when you divide it up, the minuscule amount of dividends compared to all this money, it's so worth it. Now, my estimated dividend was 3,888. It's been confirmed this morning to be a monstrous. $6,600. Let's look at my Phoebe position. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So I'm going to tell you what I think I'm, what my plan is for Phoebe. None of this is advice. You don't pay me. I don't know you. Okay, this is for your enjoyment. Just don't touch yourself when you listen to me. So three, two, two, five, plus two, seven, eight, nine, plus 2,200. Let's just call that uh, 3,050. Three. Oh, five. Oh, this was dashboard money that I made real by ripping off the top. I had some Einstein in my comments tell me this was not all profit. If I put 150000 in and I sell enough of something, okay, and to make $9,000, and I still have 150000 worth, I made $9,000. I don't care if you're selling a car, a sex robot from Tesla, I don't know. So, and then... This is the whopper, okay? So here's the plan, 79. I could leave without the dividend, but the dividend is gonna go X dividend tomorrow, okay? We have about 13 days until meta earnings. It only needs to recover like 96 cents. Do you think that meta will recover 96 cents right before earnings first opening up of the earnings season? For tech earnings, I think there's going to be excitement. My AI shadow agrees with me. So I'm going to try to do this. Recover the dividend. And then I will sell it all. Take it all. And then I made $15,000 for doing nothing. About 10%. And I don't have the carry risk. The carry risk of holding through earnings. And if they miss or something goes wrong, I'm done. I'm not married to Meta, okay? Phoebe sounds like an STD. So I might wait, sell it off in pieces. I don't know. But this one I like. I'm in it already. I hear people say I'm going to buy X dividend. You missed the whole ride, schmuck. Anyway, 
I'm so good with customer service, aren't I? I'm so polite. 13 day countdown. Hold on. Read to me, damn it. Read me from here. Read to the people. 13. That's it? That's what you're going to read. Read everything. Tard. 679. No, no, no. 13 day countdown to earnings. There you go. After the dividend, there's a 13 day countdown to earnings. During this time, I will be slowing selling into the daily pumps to eliminate the risk of an earnings miss. I'll step aside with dividends and profits in hand, maintaining control regardless of whether they hit. Ah, whether they hit or miss. This was supposed to be slowly. Look, it's just like when the guys adjust their spreadsheets right in front of you. It's like adjusting your nuts in front of a girl. I've already won and I can decide what to do after earnings. So that's my play for Meta. Okay, I'm not in love with Meta. They shocked me. Great job there, uh, Jay Diddy and Aldo in the trading floor. The dwarf, great job on Phoebe. Let's talk about the ability to recover from a devastating impact in an ETF. We're going to look the exact same day six months ago at Tesla. Uh, Tesla okay, It was $142.00. From then to now is a $100 gain. This date is Monday, the 22nd of April. Let's look at Tess Lee. It's 1251 today. Remember, let's go down here. Same day, okay? It was $12.98. Again, when Te Tesla was $100 less. I'm saying this slowly for the people in the uh, Kramer group. That's how I decided to pronounce, come here, come in her, whatever. We're not even gonna give him the respect of his name anymore after what he did with changing brokerages and hiding his losses like we're all stupid. Okay, now he's the guru of what am I gonna do with $10,000 today? What am I gonna do? You know what? We give you no promotion from now on, you're Kramer. Okay, everybody will think that we're talking about the guy from CNBC, because he's a schmuck too, and he's your height. Both dwarfs. Anyway, so look, back to the thing at hand. Let me take you back for the slow people. Tesla moved up one, let's go to the six months, moved up $100 from about six months ago, right? Tesla, six months ago, was higher than it is today. It took none of the capital appreciation. You wanna talk about falling down once you break an ankle, falling down twice, you break a knee, and then the third time you break a hip, how are you gonna keep up with the underlier? Okay, this brings me around to the AMSI paradox. All right, um, let me show you another one. NVIDIA. NVIDIA, let's go back. Friday, April 19th, six months ago. $76, it almost doubled. NVIDIA is $25. And going back to the same time frame, it was $23. So the only one that came up slightly, and, and here's the rub that's gonna really kill you. You ready? And it matters when you bought it. The only one that came up slightly was NVIDIA, okay? And it was 23 and it came up two dollars but here's the rub all oh, you dollar cost average schmucks oh look you dca dicks look you all buying it at 30 reinvest give me more get the dollar get this share get this share. oh shit oh shit i ruined my cost average <laughs> how'd that work out for you you destroyed yourself now you know why i don't dollar cost average i don't reinvest and i invest the way i do most of all i don't give advice I love this. But now we're going to do a deep dive. Okay. We are put. Oh, and before I go further, let's just take an overall bad stock. You get into a bad stock or a bad ETF, they're going to follow each other. But what I'm talking about here is the inability to recover. It's almost like, why is this important? I know people say NAV is not important. That's like you bought a house and you paid $300,000 for it, but you got people living in there paying rent every month. And the house is going down and down in value, okay? It's now it's worth half, and you're not taking care of it. You know what's going to happen? The people are going to want to pay less rent. 
the dividends are actually going to be less. Isn't that a great analogy? So, um, yeah, that's the problem. So I'll bring us now to the AMZ paradox. Ooh, ooh, market's coming up. Markets are coming up. How are we doing? Okay. Now, I'm not going to go into my crash situation or anything. The only reason these are different is thanks to the dividend. Both of them are waiting to come up the dividend. They're both down the exact amount of the dividend. So, um, with the, I'm, I don't count the dividend in this. This is called slutty. It's my own ETF I made. It's a properly designed. See my video, previous videos. I'm not going into it now. Ulti, every time she goes over 50,000, I scrape off the top. Okay, if you could get a pap smear off Ulti, you're good. All right, so, AMZ. Okay, let's talk about the paradox of events. This was before, okay? Let me just take this out of here. This was before, and I put three, you know, 350 is my core number. And I wanted to start unwinding the position, okay? So everything over 350, I would just sell, okay? Now, so I've ripped off the top this amount of money on good days. It went down to as low as 339. I didn't put any back, right? And I ripped here too. So I've reclaimed. This is how you unwind a bad position. Now, I'm highly concerned with what I just, you know, forget about this. This doesn't matter. Let's get to what's now. I am really torn with this. Now, I do have a saving grace, I will tell you, because I have so much positive crypto-derived income, okay, as you all know my background, okay, um, I could take a $30,000 loss and it'll just be washed with a $30,000 crypto gain. So that's its advantage if I was to take a loss. But if we drop between now and let's say after earnings, if we drop to $16, number one, it's going to be hard to recover. Number two, I take a massive hit. You have to think risk versus reward. So those of you that want to tune out, okay, can. And the rest of you, I am going to show you my logic, okay? So we're going to go through all of this with, I did this with the assistance of my AI shadow I love that. How cool is that? Read aloud, baby. And this is not Shadow's voice. The AMZY paradox. With AMZY, we're Speak in a tricky fast. spot. The fund is about to pay a dividend on the same day Amazon reports earnings. If Amazon misses earnings, earnings, AMZY could take a big hit that it might not recover from, Whoa. even with the dividend. So, selling means I'd miss the dividend, but it also protects my capital. I'd rather take a small loss now than risk a much bigger one if Amazon misses earnings again. It's all about managing risk and making sure I'm ready for better opportunities. Now, here's what's... If Amazon hit... Shut up. Here's what's really important. We have a perfect storm of events. It is a Group D stock, according to the Kung Pao, Kung Fu, J. Didi menu. It's on the D list, okay? That means it's had the longest time to accumulate money. I would not be surprised. Look, you just seen almost a dollar from Phoebe. I would not be surprised if we see something outrageous like a dollar seventeen. Now, if we get a dollar, okay, on AMSI, or the dollar seventeen, the fabled legendary dollar seventeen, was written on a rock in a cave, okay. Anyway, so what would happen is the day that Amazon reports earnings at four p.m., the market close. We go X dividend. If I collect the dividend, now we're down, let's say from, let's say we're at 19. Now we're down to 18. And I stayed into the last minute. Here's the problem. I don't have just a few shares. I have the majority, okay, of the volume. This is why the curve one, look at all these funds. Okay, curve has no volume at all. Okay, as a matter of fact, that guy's on here, and since we're talking about unwinding positions, I'll play a little bit from the guy from Curve. Hold on, let me see if I can play this. Multiple cover call positions, and you want to exit it, you have to unwind all the trades. So you have to buy the cover call back, right? Right. Also, in the, in, in the ETF, you just sell a share, the shares of the ETF. And you, come, you unwind and you exit the strategy. So that's another... So he's talking about unwinding a strategy. Okay, sometimes you have to do this. So... Let's continue on. If they understand what would happen to me, 
if we have the confluence of events. You know, Andy Jaffe or whatever his name is from Amazon is a dick. Nobody likes him. Okay, 200, I love Amazon the stock. Okay, I'm not saying that I'm out of AMZ forever or I'm selling AMZ. I am thinking what to do. And don't tell me something in the comments like sell half of it. I'm not a, a half in, half out, do the hokey pokey and spin yourself all about kind of guy. I'm all or nothing. Okay, and let me tell you, if I unload this FBY, this Phoebe position, I'm going to make a lot of profit on this. But you know what? I could pay off the HELOC. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a rub to everybody? Okay. If I unload my AMZ, I know exactly where it's going. The single best ETF that I've experienced. I'll tell you in another video. But anyway, that's why you're going to subscribe. Subscribe. Leave a comment if you want to know. Anyway, so let's continue with this. So if they hit, okay, they hit. What I've learned in the past from trading options for years and trading earnings is the pain of an earnings miss is much greater than the joy of an earnings hit. It's earnings and AMs why goes up. Sure, it might seem like I missed out, but protecting your portfolio is more important than chasing short-term gains. Smart investors know when to hold, but more importantly, they know when to walk away. The AMs Y Dilemma, timing the exit with precision. Continue, what's wrong AMs with AMs Y presents us with an interesting conundrum this month. As many of you know, AMs Y is a covered call fund that pays out monthly dividends and typically I'd hold through the X dividend date to capture that income. However, this time the X dividend date coincides with Amazon's earnings announcement later that day. Here's the twist. If Amazon misses earnings, and they have before, AMSY could take a hard hit after hours, meaning that while I might capture the dividend, the value of my shares could drop so sharply that I wouldn't be able to recover the dividend loss. It goes, it's worse than that. You, do you see the confluence of events? We're gonna have go X dividend and we're gonna get a big dividend so the price is gonna drop. We have to be able to recover from that. If it so falls on a day that Amazon disappoints, or misses, the devastation to my account will be brutal. If you're a guy with like, you know, $2,000 worth of AMZ, don't sweat this. It's temporary thing, short term, okay? Anyway, but I always have strategies. Let's continue. The question is, do I want to collect the dividend at the risk of a major hit in the ETF's price, or do I exit before earnings to protect my capital? What I'm weighing here is strategic. If I stay, I'm taking on earnings risk for a dividend I might not even- Wait. All right, let her continue. If I stay- Be able to keep if AM's Y drops. Y Hit did you hear that? You don't keep the dividend. I know, come here, guys, say, how oh, you don't keep the dividend? They give you the dividend. No, they subtracted the dividend from the top part of my account, okay? They subtracted it from up here and they moved it to the bottom, okay? If I withdraw that, I am draining, <laughs> I am draining my portfolio here, okay? So the dividend needs the underlying stock to catch up in order for it to really be a dividend, okay? Spe speak up, robot. Historically, we've seen that covered call ETFs like TSLY can have a hard time recovering when the underlying stock falls and AMSY could face a similar fate. In fact, when Amazon missed earnings last time, AM's Y struggled to regain its footing. To me, this is a classic risk reward calculation. Sure, there's the dividend payout, but if Amazon misses, we could be looking at a sharp decline that could overshadow any short term gain from the dividend. At this point, I'm leaning toward exiting before the ex dividend date to preserve capital and avoid the potential post earnings drop. This is about protecting the portfolio and making sure I have the firepower to reinvest in higher probability plays. That's got to make sense to all of you. And the unique edge that I would have is if I took this actual loss, because I would take a loss selling now. I got in, I mean, Robinhood messes up your average because they sell whatever you bought first. But I bought shares at like 22 and 21. So I have a substantial loss, but I have the unique situation that I have so much crypto income that can offset this. It can never offset dividends. That's a different kind of income, okay? That's like uh, earned income. It's taxed at a much different rate. Let's continue. 
So this would be a wash for me if I took the hit, okay? And I wouldn't stay even close to dividend day. Well, I'd feel it out step by step. I'd love to hear your feedback on this. I always write everything out like this and like a, well, let's continue. This decision exemplifies one of the core principles I always talk about being nimble in the markets. Sometimes protecting your capital is more important than chasing yield. And for those of you who are in AM's Y with me, this is a valuable lesson. Strategic exits can sometimes be the most powerful plays. Let me give you an example of a covered call ETF that cannot recover. TSLY is a covered call fund based on Tesla. Two quarters ago, Tesla was $140. Yeah, now it's $240 this. at the same time TSLY was $12. And it's still $12 today and never recovered. So this is why I'm thinking about AMs. Why tell me more? Your example with TSLY perfectly illustrates the challenges covered call ETF space. Even though Tesla's stock price has risen significantly, the TSLY fund hasn't recovered from its decline. This highlights a key issue with these types of ETFs. They cap the upside potential of the underlying stock because they generate income by selling call options, which limits price appreciation. So, even if the stock performs well, the fund might not see much benefit since the call options get exercised and profits from the stock's rise go to the option holders, not the fund. The problem with AM's Y is similar. If Amazon misses earnings again, the price might drop and the covered call structure could make it extremely difficult for AM's Y to recover, especially in the short term. The fund's income comes from selling call options, but if the stock price takes a substantial hit, both the income generated and the capital value of the ETF could suffer. Over time, covered call funds can also experience capital depletion, a situation you've coined as when payouts exceed returns, further eroding value. Yeah, Defiance is famous for that. Um, let's scoot down here. Start off here. Let's come right here and continue. We'll wrap this up. Speak. I've always emphasized that my moves are based on my unique risk tolerance and strategy. And while I've advised many of you not to mirror my trades exactly, I know some of you have joined me in AMS Y. I want to take a moment to explain why I'm considering selling now at a loss and why this is a calculated, intelligent decision. When I first entered AMS Y, I saw great potential. However, as we've witnessed with other covered call ETFs like TSLY, the nature of these funds limits their ability to recover from significant drops. AM's Y is facing a potential hit with Amazon's upcoming earnings. If they miss, we could see a sharp decline that the ETF might not bounce back from. Rather than holding on to hope, I'm taking a strategic exit to manage risk and reinvest in higher probability opportunities. I don't know if I'm selling yet, okay? And the other problem I'm going to have is the volume. Let me see. Look at this, the market just opened, there's 500 volume, okay? So I've learned from this, you can't just go buy 25,000 shares of something. At one point I had like 26,000 shares. So markets are just opening up right now. These two were exactly balanced at 10,007, 10,007 each. And they've been thrown off balance by the dividend. This is going to be a great experiment to see if the dividend erodes the NAV, or like this test Lee needs to come back to 10,000 for my dividend to be my dividend, okay? Crash needs to come back for my dividend to be my dividend. Let's see what the markets are doing and I'm gonna wrap it up. I would, if you stayed to the end, again, just put J Diddy. That's our new thing, J Diddy. I look forward to all your comments below. Thank you for subscribing. I think a lot of you really like the strategies over spreadsheets. I'm going to be covering more funds. I'm looking at a lot of new opportunities, but again, you know, we have to find the right funds. And unfortunately, I know the list of what Roundhill is going to introduce, okay? And AMZ is not going to be one of the first single stock ones. You're going to do the regular NVIDIA, Misty, Tesla, the ones that are going to sell the most. So it's coming, but we just have to wait. Now, XDTE, if I sell AMZ, I tell you, it's going to really whack my income, but it's still plenty enough, okay? I love XDTE. I've had 
I've had QDTE and I've had XDTE side by side. I've watched them. RDTE is a joke. Uh, I told you from the beginning, I didn't want any of that. It paid out tremendous in the beginning. Okay, money they didn't make to attract you guys. It's all the same thing all the time, all right? But I skipped that one, okay? You can go see the entrepreneurial young investor, whatever his name, he likes that one. But I love this S&P 500. I love this. I can't tell you. I watched it stand strong, okay? Watched it stand strong when QDTE takes huge hits, okay? Well, I'm pointing to the wrong thing, but you know. QDTE takes huge hits, XDTE stands tall, pays less dividends, whatever. But like I said, it's my Todd Akins. So if you stayed till this part, again, put J. Diddy and your intelligent comments. Have a nice day.